Hi everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vet Do It and Twin Motion video. Now today we're just going to carry on looking at libraries using Vet Do It to create the libraries that are already available and actually see how you can get these into Twin Motion and build them into user library objects. So you can see here's a quick preview of my Vet Do It file, here's a quick preview of my Twin Motion file, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make all of these native Twin Motion objects. Now I've been quite interested in enhancing my projects with a range of additional libraries that Vectorworks has a vast amount of and I stumbled across these really nice uh, recreational libraries with things like motorbikes, uh, bikes and mobility vehicles, these kind of things. So I'm going to show you how to make a twin motion library using these Vectorworks objects um, as Vectorworks and twin motion work really well together. The first thing you want to do is find these libraries. Now if you would like to find where they are and um, basically all you need to do is probably search for the word vehicle okay hit return in the search dialog and what that will do is basically choose anything that in Vectorworks is tagged uh, with the name vehicle so that you can actually find it in your libraries. Now once you've found the library that you're looking for then basically you can right click and select resource location. This is a really nice little tip because what this will do is open up in the Vectorworks libraries where this library is stored. Now you can see there's some really you know good libraries here and you can have a little browse through um, construction libraries as well for doing construction projects as well so these are great um, all of these we can get into Twinmotion and use them within our projects so let's just focus for a minute on this particular library here. Now you can see um, I can right click and download and install that if I would like that to be a permanent library on my system rather than having to kind of drag it in from the cloud each time. So that's a pretty good thing to do with these libraries. Okay, so I've actually got the library open here. What I would like to do is basically drag and drop these symbols into the layer. Now I've done this by changing the scale to something appropriate. I'm at one to a hundred scale as you can see. So that means I can actually create myself what I call a visual library. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to drag and drop these vehicles in uh, sort of sensible order I guess. Let's have a little look at this. Uh, I think what we'll do is swap around those mobility vehicles just so they're in a little group and so on. Now we'll do a few more of these in a minute. I've actually got a file with a few more in. Now the nice thing with the Vectorwit symbols is they look great in 2D but of course you've got hybrid 2D stroke 3D uh, models in there as well. So that's really nice. Nice models actually and you'll see I've got some good tips on how to make these look even better in a moment. Okay, so what we'll now do is we'll select all of those. I'm going to go to my workspace where I've added uh, a line and distribute as a right click capability. And what I like to do is basically just get them all lined up and equally spaced. So it just makes it really nice and neat. There we go. Fantastic. Now, you can see this is the process. You go to Resource Manager, drag them in, and then maybe arrange them on the page in a sensible fashion how you would like. Okay, so I've already got a layer over here that I'm just going to flick onto for a second where I've done this. And what we'll do, we'll just go to turn that one off for a second. Um, and you can see there's some really nice vehicles in here. Now, if you do zoom into some of these, what I noticed to begin with was they seem quite faceted. But don't worry, this isn't actually how the model is. This is simply the way I'm viewing it at the moment. So to check this out in full quality, all you need to do is go to OpenGL open GL options and here we go this is often a, a thing where you get low quality um, triangulation and sort of faceting just get the medium uh, the detail level up to high maybe medium let it redraw for a second you see the geometry reloading here and suddenly that will look really nice and smooth F fantastic so I think I could actually cycle on those now um, I'm also going to draw the edges um, and that, this helps sort of define the edges sort of graphically that's a really nice little tip. And then finally, I'm going to put some shadows on with high quality. Now, you won't actually see any shadows until you turn on a light source, if you have one. Um, so to pop a light source into my project, all I'm going to do is just use my Heliodon from my visualization palette here. I drop a light source in. And the nice thing about that is you'll just get some amazingly sort of nice instant shadows. And what I can do is just sort of swing around the light to a slightly brighter time of day. That's fine. Maybe go a little bit earlier in the year. 
and I can adjust the time. And this is purely just a visual thing, just so I like to look at my project with a bit of light and shadow and see how great they look. Okay, good. So what we'll do now then, um, we'll save our file, okay, and we'll basically, if we want to, we can pop open our resources panel and we can right click and we can say, I, I like this, so I'm gonna add this as a favorite file. So now we've kind of enhanced the basic Vectorworks library, we'll add this to our, let's say our 3D libraries. So we can come back again. Okay, so that's the first part of this little tutorial, um, really just showing you how to access the amazing content that's already available in Vectorworks. So for this next part then, we'll go off to do the exporting process. And there's multiple file formats that you can actually export. Now we could do the Datasmith one, but I've been quite reliant so far on using the Cinema 4D one. They both work really well. Um, the Datasmith perhaps gives slightly different smaller files. So let's go with this one today, export, and you can see again, you've got the level of quality. So do make sure you get that up to high. Now when you click okay, it's gonna ask you where you would like to save the file. So let's go off to a place where we can save this happily. Let's make a new folder, Twin Motion Vehicles. And we'll create that folder. And basically we'll just keep the file name here and we'll go ahead and click save. Now it's gonna process that file pretty quickly. It will take a few moments and then we'll be able to open up Twin Motion and build our actual bespoke custom libraries directly into Twin Motion. Now that was really, really quick. So let's open up Twin Motion and see how that looks. Okay, so here we are opening up our Twin Motion, ready to import our newly exported file directly from Vectorworks. Go and open the file and select our file location. You can see the Datasmith file is here and it's in a folder with all the Datasmith meshes that have come out to Vectorworks as well. I'm not quite sure what these codes mean, but I think that's so you can keep them updated if needed. So we'll click update, or open rather. Um, do make sure whatever you do, you do not collapse by material, otherwise all the materials from the objects will be in one, uh, one object. We've got to keep the hierarchy for this kind of thing when we're building libraries. So we'll click OK. That will take a few minutes to import then we'll be able to actually have a look at how we set up the custom uh, library objects in Twinmotion. So you can see it's ripping along fairly quickly. It shouldn't take too long to process and we'll get started on the next stage. Click F to find it and that will basically fit your project to where the, the libraries are. Um, so they've all come in quite nicely, but the beauty is what we can now do is we can open up the hierarchy and we can actually see all of the different vehicles. Um, so for example, if I turn off the wheelchair there, let's just fit to that one object, click zoom in, and you can see it's come in really nice quality. And some of the materials have sort of translated across as well. So if you did want to actually change the materials and things like that, all you need to do is click onto the sample, and then you'll be able to actually sort of swing through. Uh, let's just change that to a slightly different color. So that's pretty cool. So all of these things are quite customizable. Um, obviously you can also go to the twin motion materials and basically go and drag on some better materials maybe some chrome onto those wheels it look pretty chromey already actually uh, let's just drag on that that looks really cool so we've souped up the uh, the vehicles quite a bit now the final thing that you're going to want to do here is to basically turn these nicely one at a time into custom via um, custom library objects so just for a minute, I'm just gonna close down some of these hierarchies here, and let's just deal with a few of these. We'll take this one as a good example. All we're gonna do is right click, go to add to user library. Okay, let Twinmotion process that just for a second. And then what we find is if we go all the way back to our libraries, to our user library, here is our fantastic new item that we can use anytime we need to in a project. Now this is great, um, but a little extra tip here is to create a folder, call this um, recreational vehicles perhaps. So let's just uh, spot our new folder. Here it is, new category. So there's nothing in there as yet. Um, so what we can do is we can drag in our item. And then furthermore, if we basically go down and right click and rename that folder, let's just rename this recreational vehicles 
And what we'll do is we'll enter that folder. So now once we enter the folder, as we create more, more things, you'll see, let's go and do this next one here. I think that's gonna be that one there. Let's just click F to fit to that one. That's pretty cool. And again, make sure you, um, as I say, make sure you do the work on the models and the textures and things before. So if you do want to improve these, um, you know, make sure that you go back and do that before you create the user library. So let's just say we want to change the color a little bit here. Um, maybe I want to change a slightly different sort of plastic here. I can just sort of essentially drag that onto my model and that looks pretty cool. Let's sort of soup up the colour a bit here. I like that kind of colour. So it just looks a bit nicer maybe than it did before. Tuned out the vector which touches. So finally right click, we'll go to add to user library. And now when we go back to our user library, uh, we should find that that has actually created itself here again. Okay, so now we're going to drag that one in there. What we're gonna now do is enter this folder, and this really speeds the process up, um, because if we basically, let's move across to the next one. Let's take this vehicle here. If we basically, now oh, that's that one actually, let's right click and add to the user folder now. You'll see it will automatically add into the folder we're working in, which is really nice, of course. So this is a lot faster as a way to basically build the library. So all I need to do is right click and just keep adding those to my user library. That means that all of those, some, some of the bigger models by the way, they take a bit longer. You can see this one took a bit longer to actually add in. Let's do this one, right click add to user library. Now, this is a great way to really, really rapidly enhance your twin motion library by using Vectorworks as the perfect partner. Um, and I love Vectorworks and twin motion together. They're just absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I do wish sometimes that some of my twin motion libraries were a bit more um, comprehensive. So this is just a fantastic way to do it if you use both softwares. Nice library of recreational vehicles, all from Vectorworks, using my uh, Vectorworks models straight into twin motion. They've all come in really nicely. And the next time I do a project, all I need to do is go to this library, click, and basically just put them into the file. Now the really nice thing is they pop in uh, really high quality, I'll just move that up. Sometimes you just need to reset the height of them a little bit. So we'll just click onto there and all I need to do is just drag that up to the correct height. So yeah, do Jeff definitely sort of check out this process for creating really enhanced twin motion libraries directly from Vectorworks uh, models if you have Vectorworks and twin motion. Okay everybody, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, bye-bye.